What is going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Real Touch GML here back with another Game Maker tutorial. And today what we're going to be doing is creating like a wave type system. So here I went ahead and set up the actual project that we're going to be creating. And it's very simple actually. So basically you're this uh, cube here. And really what I'm going to be showing today is how to create, uh, you know, kind of like a wave type of system in, in which, you know, these enemies will... Um, you know come from different angles of the screen and you know as the wave uh, you know as the levels get higher it actually gets more difficult for the user to survive so we're gonna be looking over you know random spawns because this is all random I mean like uh, you know I didn't this is not like one big room and I like set up a bunch of blocks like every playthrough will be different with this system so uh, so yeah so I just set up a little system here so a wave increases every uh, every five seconds and as you can see it gets a lot harder as you go on to the point where you know it basically gets impossible there's no hit detect I didn't put any hit detection in. it's just you know it's, yeah so that that's when it becomes uh, impossible alright so I'm gonna go ahead and be right back and uh, kinda erase all of this and we'll start from scratch alrighty so I am back and I left a couple things in just because it's not really the main focus for the tutorial here so what I went ahead and did was here we have two sprites we have the player sprite which is the 32 by 32 uh, blue uh, square and we have a enemy sprite which is just a 16 by 16 red square alright I also have a script in here that initializes a particle effect which again just kind of for the sake of making it look good not anything to do with the wave system that we'll be creating I went ahead and uh, kept a font in there just, you know, because we're going to be creating that heads-up display that you saw in the beginning. And our player movement, I just kept the player movement in because, you know, that's pretty basic and you should know how to, you know, be able to move a square around. And, uh, and for our enemy here, I went ahead and just left in the initializing particles and the creating particles every step. Along with, if you're outside of the room, just destroy itself for efficiency uh, sakes. All right, so that's all I've done. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create an object. Now I'm gonna name it OBJ Wave, right? And in the create event, I'm gonna set up a couple variables here. So we're gonna actually be using Wave, th this object, as also the heads up display. So it's going to be creating the enemies and we're going to be also using it as, you know, that object that controls the heads up display. Now you can uh, have two different objects for that, doesn't really matter, uh, but we're just going to be doing it in there, okay? So I'm going to create a variable named wave, and that's going to be equal one, and that's just basically the level that we're at. You know what? I'm gonna actually going to name it level, just so it's, uh, just so you can understand it better. All right, so that's the level. We're, now we're also going to say uh, time, and this is going to equal to five. Now the time is basically the variable at which it counts down it, it keeps track of what uh, time it's at it, that I showed in the beginning of the video so you could put this up to 30 60 it doesn't matter that is how long it's gonna take until the next wave begins or next level alright and then here we're just going to create a variable called spawn rate and I'm gonna start this at 50 now this has to do with the script that we're going to be creating so basically the higher the number the less probability of a enemy spawning so we're going to start it off at 50 and every time that level increases we're just going to subtract from the spawn rate that's the kind of the idea of this system all right and then we should be good for now all right so let's go ahead and create a script here and i'm just going to name this uh check underscore spawn all right, and what we're gonna do right here is I'm gonna create a variable called, uh, we'll just call it uh, SPWN for spawn. And this is gonna be equal to floor random argument zero, okay? So that's basically it. What this does is basically floor just sets any random value we have here to a whole number. So basically this just rounds up to the uh, nearest decimal 
or the nearest whole number, right? And then argument zero here is what we're gonna put into the script. So if we go ahead and go up here and we put in three forward slashes and we put in check spawn and just exactly what we did with the name. And now we say here, um, spawn rate. And we just do it exactly like that. I'll show you what that does later on, but that's something built in the game maker, which will actually help us when we script. All right. So now what we're going to do here is, well, you know what, here, let, let me just show you that now. So if we go into OBJ wave and we go into the step event here and we type in check underscore spawn, as you can see right here, check spawn, it now gives us that little helpful hint that we need to put in the spawn right here, okay? So instead of it just being saying nothing, not really knowing uh, you know, what to do, it now says spawn rate and now we know, hey, we need to put in the spawn rate. So in here, I'm just going to put the spawn rate variable that we created, which is basically the same exact thing as putting in 50 because we set the variable spawn rate to 50. All right, but now what does this 50 do? Let's go ahead and go back into our script here. And we're gonna check um, if spawn equals zero, right? Now equals zero, this is because, you know, if we put in 50 here, basically what this floor random is gonna do is it's going to uh, get a number zero through 49, which is 50 numbers because I count zero as a number. So we're just checking, hey, out of those 50 uh, numbers, if it hits zero, then let's do something. So in here, what I'm gonna do is, first off, I'm going to create another variable. And I'm just gonna name this var um, side. And this is going to e be equal to floor random again. Instead of you know just a random uh, argument zero, we're gonna put in four. And this is equal to the four sides of the screen. So, for example, uh, you know, with this box here, we've got the right side, the left side, the bottom side, and the top side. And that's basically what we're doing. So we're gonna check, hey, if this side equals zero, spawn our enemy on the left. If it equals one, spawn them on the right, three, top, four, bottom. Or it would be subtract one from that. So this would be zero because it goes zero through three. All right, so so now if spawn hits, it's now going to pick a random side. So here we're gonna get a little bit advanced with coding. I don't know how good of coding, how good at coding you are, but uh, we're gonna create something called a switch statement, and it's basically the same thing as an if else uh, ladder. Um, but basically here we're gonna put in switch, and then we're gonna put in our variable side here, and in here I'm gonna say k zero break, and I'm gonna copy this. Paste it two more or three more times, and in here I'm just going to say case one, case two, case three. All right, so this is basically saying, hey, if side equals zero, perform this action. It's the same thing as doing if side equals zero, do this. It's just a little bit neater. All right, so you can pick whatever method you like. So in case zero, this is going to be. Let's actually comment in here. This is gonna be right side, or no, let's have this be left side. This will be left side. We'll go in like a, a clockwise banner here. So, so this will be top side. This will be right side. And this will be bottom side. All right, so in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say obj, which is a variable, equals instance create and here, since this is the left side, we're going to say zero for X and random room height and then OBJ red because that's what our enemy name is. I'm just going to, there we go. Now, you may be wondering, okay, so now we've actually got it spawned, but how do we uh, set a valued speed to the enemy? Because, you know, how do we know what side it's spawning on? We don't. And that's why we went ahead and created this obj variable before the instance create because basically what this instance create does is it returns the object that we just created into this uh, variable so now all we have to do is create a dot operator obj dot and now we can now we're basically hacking into that 
object that we just created and we can now set any value we'd like. So I can say h speed equals 5. So let me go ahead and copy this. Paste it down for these guys here. And so this is top side, so we're going to go ahead and say 0 for the y in random room width for the x. And here we're going to say v speed equals 5 because that's vertical speed. So now right side, we actually don't need to change anything except setting our initial value to room width and h speed to negative 5. And bottom side, now all we have to do is say, um, we would have to do random room width and then just start this guy out at our room height. And then our v speed equals negative 5. All right, so let's go ahead and plop that in the room and run it and see what we get. Okay, so we've got spawning on the bottom top. Oh, and it looks like it works. Boom, that's how you do it right there. So now we've got a nice little spawning system, you know, that spawns on any side we'd like. And it works. So, for example, I could take this spawn rate and I could put it to five. And if we put it to five, that's going to definitely increase the odds of enemy spawning because now instead of circling through 50 variables and checking if one equals zero we are now sifting through only five variables and that gets re uh, calculated every step and since uh, the FPS the room speed in this game is 60 it's getting clocked through 60 times so as you can see there's a much much bigger spawn or much better chance of an enemy spawning all right, so let's put that back up to 50. So let's go ahead and just create the heads up display real quick to kind of make it just, you know, its own little game, so, you know, a, a nice complete game. So here I'm just gonna set alarm zero. Actually, no, let's not do that yet. Let me just, let's, let's go, let's create a draw event here and let's draw set color C black and draw set font FNT display and these are all fonts I've already created so I'm gonna just gonna draw the text at 10 10 and then I'm gonna say level plus string level we need to cast that to a string because it's an int right now and then I can also draw text at 10 uh, we'll say 450 next wave in plus string time so let's go ahead and run that now you know and and that's a lot of debugging process on you know getting it to look exactly how you want it to look so there we go that looks fine uh, so we have level one and next wave in five it, it doesn't subtract yet though so we're gonna have to fix that all right so in the create event let's go ahead and set alarm zero to equal 60 or you could do room speed it doesn't matter because we want this to clock through every second and in alarm zero here, we're gonna check if time is less than or equal to zero. We're gonna set time to equal five again. We're gonna set level to, uh, we're gonna increase level by one. And I do level plus plus. Now, Game Maker 8 or 8.1, I don't think has this. So instead of plus plus, just do plus equals one if that doesn't work and you get an error. And we're also gonna say, um, uh, spawn rate minus equals five. And then we can just say else time minus minus or time minus equals one. And then alarm zero equals 60 again. So that's just basically, so if it's below zero, we're just setting the time, resetting the time, increasing the level and subtracting the spawn rate. And if it's not less than or equal to zero, then we're just gonna subtract the time because it needs to run through that again. So let's go and try it again. So we, as you can see in the bottom left, it's now subtracting. And when it gets to zero, our, our level now increases. And so now technically it has a, the there's a better chance of enemy spawning now as the levels in. 
So I'll go ahead and just go until um, until it's basically impossible. You can see it's getting a little bit harder. So now we have like an actual cool little established game that we are uh, that we have made here, and in only what 15 minutes. So it's pretty cool. So you can see level eight now. So it's getting kind of harder. Of course, I don't have any hit detection or anything. You might have to put that in, in yourself if you'd like a, you know, you want to experiment with a game like this. But now we got level 10 and now level 11, which it gets impossible. So go leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's go ahead and try for 100 likes this time. Uh, I really appreciate all of the support. And I will, of course, see you guys next time. Peace.